What's up everybody and welcome back to the G-Rated Family Gaming Channel. Today I want to show you guys how to make really cool renders of Roblox characters using Blender and Roblox Studio. Uh, so this is free, it, all you have to do is make sure you download Roblox. If you download Roblox and you've got Roblox Studio in there as well, and this free program called Blender. You can find that at www.blender.org, or if you type Blender in Google it'll take you there too. And then click on the download tab, and then you can find free downloads, just pick your operating system, whether you've got Mac, OS, Linux, whatever you've got. Make sure you download the correct version for your Windows and the operating system that you are running. So first thing you want to do is come in and open up Roblox Studio. Okay, now that you've got Roblox Studio open, uh, you may have to log in if you aren't logged in already. If so, just click on login and log in with your regular uh, Roblox sign-in information. Uh, click on the base plate so that you can go in there. Okay, then you will be sent to this basic uh, base plate setup for building a level. What you want to do is come into this test tab, click on the test, and then click here on play. And then this should drop your Roblox character here in the base plate layout. Okay, so there we have our Roblox character. If you want, you can actually move around here just normal. Uh, but I recommend just kind of stand still so that you know in the next step uh, when you're in Blender, you don't have to move things around. So basically, this is your character. Uh, come in here over to the right side over in Workspace. Next, come to the right here over in Workspace. And right here where it says your username, right now this obviously just says my uh, username, but you want to right click on that and then go down to Export Select. So you can save it to wherever you want, make a folder wherever you want, call it whatever you need. Uh, just make sure you know where you're saving it. I've got this one, Roblox Avatar, so I'm going to go and save it in here. Now that we've come in here, I'm going to name this uh, Roblox, uh, Roblox Character File. Okay, so I'm going to do that. It's going to save an OBJ file right there at that location. So now you've gotten everything that you really need here from Roblox Studio, so you can go ahead and close Roblox Studio. You don't need to save any of the changes. And then come in here and open Blender. Blender is a free program, so once you guys download it, it is perfectly safe, it is good to go. Once you've got Blender open, you can just click here and maybe, maybe maximize this whole thing. What you wanna do is this square here is basically selected, so you wanna press delete to remove that square and then confirm with the delete. So that gets rid of the little square thing that you had here in the middle. So now you want to import your OBJ file that you just exported from Roblox Roblox Studio. So go to File, and then go to Import, and then come down here to Wavefront.obj file. Okay, so navigate to the folder where you put your OBJ file. So go and double click on that, or click on it, and then click on Import OBJ. And then as you can see, you've got your Roblox character right here standing in the middle, but he's all grayed out. He doesn't have any color. You can actually move around here. You know that little mouse wheel in the middle? If you scroll it up and down, it'll make you go in and out. But if you press it in and then move your mouse around, then you can see that it'll actually kind of scroll around in a different angle. So that middle mouse wheel is, is to uh, use that to navigate your way around here. Now, if you want to get the color in your character, of course you do. So you want to click on this little plus sign here just to expand this little selection. And then you want to scroll down a little bit in this and click on Texture Solid and Ambient Occlusion. As you can see, like the Ambient Occlusion kind of changes the shading a little bit on him, but Textured Solid gives him all of the colors. So if you want the look with this, then click on that. If you don't like it, then, you know, it's kind of up to you how you want to change the Ambient Occlusion. And you can mess with these numbers a little bit, but I just click on those and leave them default the way they are. And now we're gonna come over here to the right panel and come down to shading. We don't want all the background to show up in our render, so what we're gonna do is get rid of that. So go to here where it says alpha and it says S, go up there to transparent. So it's gonna be alpha transparent alpha T instead of alpha S. All right, and then come up here to this gold icon, this, the fourth one here, uh, or the second from the right side, and then scroll down and you're gonna wanna click on ambient occlusion environmental lighting and indirect lighting. So that really just helps it look a little bit better and helps with the overall lighting of the final render. Okay, next we want to go to this little camera icon here, this first little uh, icon in this list. And I think we want to get some of the presets to, uh, to 4K. Uh, you can do it at uh, 1080 HP if you want to, but I'd much rather do it at a higher resolution because you can make it smaller uh, rather than blowing it up. But usually you're gonna do like a, a 1080 sort of resolution for what you're gonna do in your thumbnail. So it's really no big deal if you do 4K or if you do 1080 here, but when I do 4K and then I make it smaller, it actually just looks a little bit better than if I have to just render it in 4K to begin with. So you want to get it in 4K by typing 3840 by 2160 here in the bottom. 
2160. So that gives you 4K resolution, and this is at 100. If it's not at 100, make sure it says 100% here on the bottom below that in the resolution. Okay, so now that you've got that set up, over here on this window, you can see uh, we've got this little thing over here in the corner. This is actually, just consider this a camera, basically. This is basically the view, and you can move this around, and whatever this is capturing, that is going to be in your render. So right-click on that camera, and then press the zero noom key. It's the uh, number key. You can't just do the number zero, it will just delete everything. So make sure you are doing the zero num key on the on the num numeric keys on the right side of your keyboard. So at this point, you are looking from the camera view. If you can hold a uh, shift and then press F, then that will give you the option to use W, A, S, and D to move the camera around. So also you've got your mouse. If you move your mouse around, you can also move this. So the combination of your mouse and using these keys. Also, if you hold shift, then your D and your W, A, and S will move a little bit faster. So it's, it's a little easier that way. So basically all you wanna do is position the camera exactly how you want to render the picture. You can zoom out if you wanna capture just a little bit more of him. You can zoom in if you want more. You can move it up and down with your mouse. Uh, so just kind of get used to how you're doing this. If you happen to push a button and you get locked away, then go and right click again and press the zero noom key and that will bring you back there where you need to go. Also, as far as navigation goes, you may find that this camera is like too high up and coming down at an angle and you kind of want to shoot it a little further from below. So take this and then right click on this camera and then after, if you hold the right click, you can actually move it up and down. So if you want to kind of get kind of an overhead view, you can do that. But if you want to get a little further down, make sure when you're right clicking on that, you can pull that down and then click right there. So you're gonna pull, use right click to move it and then use left click to make sure it stays there. If you click right click again, then it's gonna move it back to where it was. So now that we've got this again, we can right click on it and then press zero. And you can see we've got a little bit of a different different view from over here. If you want to exit the view, just uh, basically do the middle mouse key and then move that. And then you can get back to this navigation look over here. Uh, you can zoom in and out again with your middle uh, wheel. Let's see, okay, that looks pretty good. I think I still wanna move my my uh, camera down a little bit. So I'm going to do this, get out of this mode, zoom out, uh, take the camera and right click on the camera, move it right here. Okay, left click on it so it stays. Now we're gonna right click on it again, press the zero noom key. All right, cool, so shift F, that gives us the opportunity to zoom out. Okay, cool. So now we've kind of got the angle that I was going for and what I wanted to get. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can get my render. I think I just wanna get the top of him like this a little bit. Okay, so that is that is exactly what I was going for here. So now we do that and now that we've got him exactly in our view the way we want it to look, all you have to do is press enter and then that is your frame, it is set right there. Now that you've got the image, basically everything in this box is going to be rendered. We've got it so the outside is gonna be transparent around it. So over on the right side, when you're all ready, click on render over here to render the active scene. And then as you can see here, it is doing going through the rendering process. It's zoomed in a little bit, but don't worry, it is gonna render the whole thing. Okay, now after it's done rendering, you can come down here to the bottom left side where it says image. Click on image and then go to save image as, or you can press F3. And then basically at this point, you can scroll to the same file. I've got the Roblox avatars here and then click on save as image right here. And then there you go, you've got your render and you can open this up either in GIMP or in Photoshop or in some sort of program. Uh, just mess around a little bit, move the cameras around, see how you can mess around with the angles. Uh, just kind of get used to navigating and using the camera and moving the camera around and figure out how to get just different angles of your Roblox character to do that. So here we go, this is the rendered image. When you pull this into Photoshop or GIMP, you can just use it however you want, Put make an overlay, maybe do a little bit of a, a stroke color around the character, whatever works for you, but this is how you get your Roblox avatar exported and making it looking really nice. I hope this video has been super helpful for you guys. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment below, and hit the notification bell so that you can come and join us during our live streams and be a part of this amazing community. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.